Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about the digestion and absorption of lipids. If you guys haven't already, we talked about this in a little bit of detail in the uh, lipoprotein metabolism video. We're going to go into a lot more detail in this video on the chemical digestion and the absorption, but we're not going to go into extreme detail on the packaging of these fats into structures called chylomicrons. If you guys haven't, go see our video on lipoprotein metabolism. You'll get a little bit more information on that. But in this video, we're primarily going to focus on the chemical digestion, the absorption, and then we'll talk very briefly about the chylomicrons. But if you guys want more information on that and lipoprotein metabolism in general, like VLDLs, IDLs, HDLs, LDLs, go watch that video. All right, so cool. When we talk about lipid metabolism, it's an extremely interesting pathway. Um, what we need to first do is get down this basic understanding of, of what we're gonna do in this video. So first thing we have to understand is when we talk about lipids, the big component that we are going to be you know, consuming in certain types of foods uh, is going to be triglycerides. So we're gonna say here, try glycerides. Other things that we're going to consume that are consistent of the lipid category are cholesterol, but particularly the cholesterol that we ingest in the foods is what's called a cholesterol ester, and we'll talk about that afterwards. And the next thing I want to talk about after that is there's going to be one more substance that we can find abundant within the lipids too, and that's going to be uh, phospholipids, so certain types of substance, substances and food that contains phospholipids. But of the most significant here in CAPS is going to be the triglycerides. This is going to be the one that we contain tons of whenever we actually consume certain foods rich in fats. Imagine, I don't know, taking some butter or oil, you know, certain types of foods that are rich in fats. Now, what we're going to do is, in this process, we're going to take these triglycerides, these cholesterol esters, these phospholipids, which we're going to categorize or group as a polymer, right? We're going to call these our polymers. And remember, polymers are the large unit of these actual macromolecules, the lipids. What we're going to do is we're going to take these polymers and we are going to break them down through specific enzymatic steps into monomers. What are some of those monomers? Well, if you want to know the triglycerides, we're actually going to break those down into specific components. Let's actually keep the color consistent here. We're going to break it down into triglycerides into fatty acids, okay, fatty acids, and what's called MAG, I'm going to refer to it as. And this stands for monoacyl glycerol okay so that's one thing that we're going to talk about the next thing is we're going to take cholesterol esters and break down cholesterol esters into cholesterol you'll see how we do that afterwards as well and then the final thing is you'll see how we can break down phospholipids into their individual constituents and how we can break it down into like glycerol and fatty acids all right cool deal now again, what is the whole purpose here? We're taking polymers, breaking them down into their individual units, and these individual units are going to be monomers. This process where we break down these big molecules into these small molecules is called catabolism, right? So this is a catabolic pathway. Now generally, whenever we break down these substances, we do it through a mechanism which is referred to as hydrolysis. Hydrolysis meaning that we add water into the actual reaction to break specific types of bonds. And the bonds that you're going to see that we're going to frequently break in this video is going to be what's called ester bonds. A little bit of uh, structure on the ester bond because I don't want us to go into super, super detail here. But the basic structure of an ester, if some of you have taken biochemistry, if you had organic chemistry, the basic structure of an ester is you have what's called a carbonyl compound. So it's a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen, singly bonded to another oxygen, which is bound to some type of carbonyl, I'm sorry, um, carbon groups, so hydrocarbons. And then coming off the other side, there's this carbon who's doubly bonded to the oxygen is also bound to some hydrocarbons. So this is the basic structure here of what we refer to as a ester, okay? So if you know a little bit about your organic chemistry or your biochemistry, you'll understand this process. 
What we're going to do is, is we're going to take and go over these specific examples, how we break down triglycerides, cholesterol esters, phospholipids into their individual monomers or basic building blocks, utilizing specific enzymes within the gastrointestinal tract. Now remember, we've used this diagram in the digestion of carbohydrates, we've used this uh, diagram in the digestion and absorption of proteins. We're gonna do the same thing here. This big, big brown tube here is representing the lumen of your gastrointestinal tract. Now, we're gonna assume that we're going from the oral cavity all the way down to the doo-doo hole, the anus, right? But along the way, there's going to be specific points where we need enzymes to help in this chemical digestion. Some of those points are gonna be represented by these little tubes here, these little inlets. Now, where are these going to be found? One of the big ones is going to be found here in the oral cavity. So at the oral cavity, you're gonna find a specific enzyme that's really important in the chemical digestion. I shouldn't say significantly important. He does play a role in the chemical digestion of lipids, but nowhere near is the, the amount played by the pancreas. So that's one. The next place is going to be the actual stomach, okay? The stomach has gastric glands, and one of them is gonna be uh, having a special cell there called a chief cell, and they also secrete an important chemical that's gonna help with this digestion. And the last one is going to be the pancreas. So the last point here will be the pancreas, and you'll see that the pancreas is also connected with the liver. We'll have a mini diagram in the video afterwards, but there's gonna be a lot of different digesting enzymes coming from the pancreas, and there's gonna be a really important component coming from the liver or the gallbladder called bile, and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. All right, so let's go ahead and say first that we've digested some type of food substance that is rich in fat, okay? So here's this big fat molecule. Here's our little fat substance that we've ingested. So this is the fat, okay? We're going to ingest this fat here, and we're gonna bring it in to our GI tract. The first point that it's gonna come into contact with is the oral cavity, we already said that. There's special types of salivary glands. Let's denote this in pink. They're primarily in high concentration, these glands, the ones that make this enzyme, underneath the tongue. You know, there's the, the sublingual salivary gland there. And then there's another one here on the side of the face, right? And this is gonna be anterior to the ear and around the masseter muscle. This is going to be the parotid salivary gland. So you have two important glands here. One is the parotid salivary gland, and the other one is the sublingual salivary gland. What these guys do is they secrete a chemical into the actual oral cavity, and this chemical is called lingual lipase. How convenient, right? So this chemical is called lingual lipase. Now, I'm gonna come back to this because we're also gonna have another one here in the stomach which is gonna be acting very, very similar and in tandem with this enzyme. Because you have to remember, when we talk about uh, ingesting food, food isn't in our oral cavity that long, okay? <laughs> For me, it isn't. When, I, when I'm eating food, I'm swallowing it pretty quick, right? So the enzymatic activity of this enzyme isn't gonna be very long inside of the oral cavity. So whenever we swallow the food via deglutition, it goes down through the pharynx, the esophagus, and into the stomach. In the stomach, you have specific cells here called chief cells. And the chief cells are secreting a chemical, and that chemical that they're releasing out into this area is going to have similar, similar function to this enzyme, and this is called gastric lipase. Okay? So again, just as a side note here up here on the top, this is coming from the sublingual and the parotid, the extrinsic salivary glands. And then from the stomach, it's gonna be coming particularly from the chief cells. Okay, sweet deal. If you remember, the chief cells were also responsible for secreting a protein, a digesting enzyme called pepsinogen, which got converted into pepsin. Cool, these guys are primarily going to be focusing on breaking down triglycerides. So now what we have to do is I have to give you a basic structure of the triglycerides. So now the first thing that this is going to digest, we said, is the triglycerides. So now let's go ahead and look at a triglyceride here. So first off, we have to have a molecule here called uh, glycerol. And glycerol is really important because it's going to be one of the structures of the triglyceride. Okay, so here we have this. And then coming off of glycerol, generally has these OH groups. 
but we get rid of the H and we combine onto this a fatty acid. So now what I need to have here is I'm going to have a carbon doubly bounded to an oxygen, and then we're just gonna have some hydrocarbons coming off of this point here. And then same thing right here, and then same thing right here. Okay, remember I told you before there was a particular bond with inside of these structures here that was really, really specific that we wanted to know? What was that bond? An ester bond. It was an ester bond. That is the bond that these enzymes are gonna be particularly looking to digest. So, lingual lipase and gastric lipase. What they're gonna do is, is these guys are gonna come in here and focus on breaking these bonds. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna come in here and try to digest these bonds. So now when these enzymes, lingual lipase and gastric lipase, come over here and they break the ester bonds, right? They're breaking these ester bonds and lipids. They're not doing all of them because these guys are, <clears throat> do, are playing a very significant role in the chemical digestion but not enough to break down all of the fat, okay? You gotta think about it. Whenever we are uh, ingesting food, that's coming, the lingual lipase is coming from the oral cavity. The gastric lipase is coming from the stomach. These enzymes aren't gonna have a lot of time to be able to focus on these triglycerides and break them down completely. But what they will do is, when they break down the triglycerides, they can give off some free fatty acids. Let's assume here that the lingual lipase and the gastric lipase are able to cleave off a couple fatty acids. Let's, say, let's just say two. Maybe they break down to two fatty acids. They give off two fatty acids. So now if that's the case then, I'm gonna take here my glycerol, which is kinda like that backbone structure here. Let me get him drawn up here. And let's assume that the top two was the one that we lost. So if we lost this, we're gonna cleave that off here. What's gonna happen is this is gonna get an OH there from the water reacting, and that's gonna get an OH. But this part here, we're gonna say we left it alone. We didn't break this bond. Let's assume that we did not break this bond. And if that is the case, we're still going to have this ester bond here that wasn't completely uh, digested. Now, what we see here as a structure is you have a fatty acid bound to a glycerol. So we call that a monoacyl glycerol. We can kind of denote it here as a M-A-G. But what else did we release off of this? Technically, we actually released off two fatty acids. So what else should I have over here? I should also have two free fatty acids. Let me draw all these guys here. So boom, boom, there's my carbonyl. And here's one fatty acid, and let's say another one here and there is my other fatty acid. So these are my free fatty acids. So when this enzyme gastric lipase and lingual lipase function, they actually are designed to break down the ester bonds and triglycerides, and when they do it, they're not gonna have a uh, large, large function here because the fats are, you have to think about it. If you take fats and water, what happens? They don't really mix that well. So because of that, these enzymes, lingual lipase and gastric lipase, have, don't have a large surface area that they have to work on. That's where bile is going to come into play, okay? These enzymes are breaking down lipids, but not a large amount of them. And so this is something that we'll get as a result of the lingual lipase and the gastric lipase. Maybe some monoacylglycerol and some free fatty acids. But in reality, it's not gonna break down a large amount of these triglycerides. A lot of these triglycerides are gonna continue to go down the gut tube eventually till we get to the small intestine. So now, let's go to the small intestine. So we already talked about the stomach, we already talked about the oral cavity structures. Now we're gonna get to this next level. The next level we're gonna hit is we're gonna be in this portion of the GI tract, which is going to be the duodenum. Now, if you have watched our videos, you realize that we know that the duodenum is important because what happens is you have a structure here. You know you have a structure here called the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is storing and concentrating the bile. There's one structure here, this green tube right here, which is actually getting bile from the liver via the right and left hepatic ducts, then the common hepatic ducts, fused with the cystic duct here. And then what happens is it comes down to the level of the pancreas. And if you know, the pancreas has a special duct here. And let's draw this duct like this. 
This is the main pancreatic duct. But what happens is, is the main pancreatic duct in this green tube here, which is the cystic duct, fuse together. When they fuse together, they make this area called the hepatopancreatic ampulla or the ampulla of Vader. And what happens is that area right there is actually surrounded by a ring of smooth muscle. And that ring of smooth muscle is called the sphincter of Odi, okay, or the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Why is this important? Because the gallbladder is storing and concentrating the bile. The liver is secreting the bile. The bile is going to be extremely important because whenever the bile comes out into the duodenum, let's assume that it actually opens up and releases out the bile, the bile is extremely crucial because the bile is actually going to be what's called an emulsification agent. So what is it called? It's called an emulsification agent. What that means is it's able to take a big, big, big fat globule and break it down into smaller fatty droplets. Let me show you what I mean here. Okay, so let's assume that the duodenum, we're here at the duodenum, let's assume that this is the pancreas and then remember that the, the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct are fusing and bringing down that common bile duct. Here's our common bile duct. Okay. And what are they releasing out into this area? Whenever that muscle relaxes, <clears throat> it's going to secrete out what chemicals? Two specific chemicals. One is it's going to secrete out the bile, and the other one is it's going to secrete out pancreatic lipase. Pancreatic lipase. All right, sweet. So before we can actually talk about pancreatic lipase, we have to talk about the bile first. So remember, the whole purpose of the bile is to act as an emulsification agent. If you guys have ever washed dishes before, you've ever had like certain foods that are rich in fat, and let's say that it's on the plate and you mix it with water, the water isn't enough to get all that grease off, right, or all that fat off. Then what do you have to add? You have to add some dish detergent. The dish detergent is actually gonna be an emulsification agent. Why? In bile, there's a lot of different substances, but crucial to this video is going to be two substances. <clears throat> One is what's called phospholipids, particularly one called lecithin. Okay, that's one. The other component of the bile here that we're gonna wanna know about is what's called your bile salts. And these are gonna be like cholic acid, and chino deoxycholic acid. These are actually derivatives, these two, cholic acid and chino deoxycholic acid, are derivatives of cholesterol. Now, <clears throat> what these two molecules are is they're kind of like amphipathic molecules. What does that mean? Let's imagine here that I have that big fat globule. So here is going to be the big fat globule that we're gonna to refer to here. Here's my big fat globule. And in that big fat globule, I have a lot of triglycerides, okay? I might even have some cholesterol esters, which I'm gonna re represent as CHE. I might even have a little bit of phospholipids in this too. What happens is this fat globule, imagine it kind of just like floating on top of this chyme. This is going to be the intestinal chyme. So all this right here is the intestinal chyme. It's the fluid secretion, okay? All the intestinal chyme. Intestinal chyme. Now, when we talk about this intestinal chyme, what I'm really, really referring to here is I'm referring to the watery secretions from the intestinal chyme. So I'm talking about a lot of the watery secretions. This fat globule is just gonna kind of sit on top of it. And the problem with that is, is we have some special enzymes that were actually secreted. Remember we talked about the pancreatic lipase? The pancreatic lipase is just sitting down here and he's like, man, I want me some fat globules. Problem is though, he doesn't have enough surface area to work on. 
So here's where these emulsification agents come into play. The first thing that we want is we're going to want phospholipids. So this is going to come first. The phospholipids will be first, and the bile salts will come second. Okay, and you'll see what I mean in this. What these molecules do is, <clears throat> is if you take a bile salt or you take a phospholipid, one side, let's imagine that it's just like this circle here. One side of it has a lot of negative charges. Okay, one side of it has a lot of negative charges. And this side of it, which is like the ionic side or the hydrophilic side, is the part that can interact with the actual intestinal chyme here, the watery secretions, and get that uh, fat uh, globule to kind of get distributed into this intestinal watery chyme. The other part of it is actually going to be this top part here, and this part is really, really good at being able to interact with lipids. This part up here is the hydrophobic portion. That is such an interesting thing. This kind of molecule, we refer to this as an amphipathic molecule. This is an amphipathic molecule. So what happens is, is these bile salts and these phospholipids, they're amphipathic molecules and they come and interact with this, uh, this fat globule. So let's imagine first is the phospholipids. So the phospholipids are going to represent here in blue. They are going to have one portion interacting with the actual flat fat globule, this side. These residues on this side interacting with the fat globule should be the hydrophobic side. Okay, that's the first part. The other side of it should be the portion which can interact with the water. So it should be this portion here. So now look at this. So now I'm going to have the, all of these guys are going to come over and they're just going to kind of surround this fat globule. And if you look at it, one portion here, the inner side, this is going to be the part that's really good at interacting with the fat globule, these pink little parts here. Okay? The other part is the hydrophilic portion, which is ionizable, right? It actually has charged points on it. And what it allows it to do is to actually allow it for it to interact with the watery secretions. Now, if it can interact with the watery secretions, guess what it can do? It's soluble. It can mix with this intestinal chyme. So now let me bring the intestinal chyme down a little bit, like a little bit deeper. So now look what's going to happen here. It's going to be a little bit deeper. And now that actual fat globule is able to be distributed into this intestinal chyme. So now from here, I'm going to bring this puppy down into this area here. Because now I have the things to surround it, which is hydrophilic interacting with the water, and keeping it bound there, I'm going to have these hydrophobic portions. Such a cool thing. Now, once we bring it into this area, into the actual fluid, it starts actually dispersing into smaller fat globules, or smaller fatty droplets, let's say. So the first thing we had to do is get the phospholipids on here, cause it to become distributed into the intestinal chyme. Once it becomes distributed into the intestinal chyme, it starts dispersing out into small fatty droplets. Let's represent here a couple of them. So now here, I'm going to have a small fatty droplet here. And now these small fatty droplets should still have what surrounding them? They should still have my phospholipids or that lecithin surrounding them. But here's where it gets even better. Now the next molecules come in. Remember I told you first would be the phospholipids. The second thing is we would need the bile salts to come along. Let's do the bile salts in this red color here. Okay? Now the bile salts are going to come into play. So here we're going to have, what are these structures right here? This is our fat droplets which are going to be smaller. This right here is our fat globule, which is pretty friggin' big. Okay, and it's not able to be dissolved into this intestinal chyme. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make these fat droplets even smaller. Next, we're going to bring in the bile salts. And the bile salts are going to be just like this, okay? So imagine here I have this red structure here. On one side of it, I'm going to have the negative charges. On the other side of it, I'm going to have the hydrophobic portions. Okay, we're going to represent the red as the bile salts, which is going to be like the 
Cholic acid or the chino deoxycholic acid, these are actually bile acids. But what will happen is they'll get reacted with uh, certain types of things like taurine. So these guys, this cholic acid and this chino deoxycholic acid, they'll actually react with two different types of molecules called taurine and glycine. And when they do that, <clears throat> it'll actually help them to become even more hydrophilic on one side and then they still have that hydrophobic portion on the other side. Now, <clears throat> once these bile salts come over here and attach on, so they're gonna come over here and they're going to attach on to these little fat droplets. Here's what's really cool. Okay, so here I'm gonna have my bile salts surrounding this, bile salts surrounding this, and my bile salts surrounding this. There's gonna be another protein that's gonna come over here and it's gonna bind, okay? It's gonna come over and it's gonna bind. Let's do this one in black. There's gonna be a protein that will come over here and bind onto this portion. This protein molecule, this black protein here is called co-lipase, okay? So that's one first thing. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have the bile salts bind which is gonna actually help them become even smaller into the next structures we'll call me cells. The next thing is it'll facilitate the binding of this, this uh, protein molecule called colipase. Then, once this colipase binds, this little Pac-Man dude, what does this Pac-Man dude that we refer to as? This Pac-Man dude here is called our pancreatic lipase. Pancreatic lipase has a hard time being able to act on these uh, fatty droplets because of the, its interactions. So what happens is co-lipase kind of gives it a little help for the Pac-Man dude, the pancreatic lipase, to come over and bind to the actual co-lipase and then help in facilitating the chemical digestion of these fat droplets. So now what's going to happen is this pancreatic lipase is going to come over and it's going to bind with this co-lipase. When it binds with the colipase, it's now going to have the perfect ability to start breaking down all these triglycerides inside of these fat droplets. Now, if we break down the triglycerides, what are we going to get out of this? So here, come over here for a second. We're going to have here a small little fat droplet. And our fat droplet here is going to have triglycerides. It's going to have some cholesterol, esters and it might even have a tiny bit of phospholipids. And we're gonna have this lecithin, and this le lecithin was actually kind of forming this like little coating around it to help it to become emulsified. Then after that, we had what else? We had our bile salts, which came from the cholic acid and chinodeoxycholic acid, which reacted with the taurine and the glycine. This helped to pack it up even more. And then we had this next structure, which is bound to it, called the colipase. When the Pac-Man dude comes over here, our pancreatic lipase, here we'll put here a little hat, pancreatic lipase, it starts breaking down the fat droplet, particularly the triglycerides. If I break down the triglycerides, what am I gonna get out of this? I'm gonna get two substances. What was the substances that I actually had? Well, here was a triglyceride. The lingual lipase and the gastric lipase exert the same functions as the pancreatic lipase, except the pancreatic lipase is gonna be even more active. So when it breaks down these triglycerides, it can break it down into monoacylglycerol and into free fatty acids, a lot of it. So it's, able, it's gonna be able to work on a lot of triglycerides, break a lot of triglycerides down into monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. So we're gonna write that as M-A-G and F-F-A monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids is what we're going to get out of this. Now, you guys are probably wondering, we've broken down the triglycerides, but Zach, you said that we were also going to break down cholesterol esters and phospholipids. We do. Another thing that I didn't talk about here yet is because it's not, it's not as large as the pancreatic lipase, but still important, is from this um, pancreatic juice, there's going to be two other chemicals that are released. One is called phospholipase A2, okay, PLA2. And the other one is called cholesterol ester hydrolase. Okay, cholesterol ester hydrolase. 
The phospholipase A2, guess what it's going to do? It's going to come over and break down phospholipids. Phospholipids are kind of just like these uh, triglycerides. If you want to know a little bit about it here, I'll show you a very tiny little quick thing here. Imagine here I have my glycerol. And let's say here I'm going to have a phosphate group coming off here. That phosphate group allows for it to be nice and polar. And then coming off here, I'm going to have a um, two hydrons, I have a total of two hydrons here. And then coming off of this point here, I'm going to have my fatty acids. And let's say here again, I'll have a fatty acid. And usually one of these has a double bond in there which causes it to be a little kinked. And it causes the phospholipid to take on like this little bench structure. Okay? But this is our phospholipids. So what happens is, is this phospholipase A2 is going to be really good at breaking down these actual phospholipids. And it breaks it down into the free fatty acids and even some of that actual glycerol. So that's one thing, okay? The other one is the cholesterol ester hydroxylase. Same thing, you don't have to know too much, like all the different things like this. But if you remember, cholesterol has this basic structure here, like there's a bunch of rings. And what's important here is that it has this OH group over here. And usually what happens is if I take this OH group and I bond it with a fatty acid, I have this structure here, which we refer to as a cholesterol ester. Usually it has something like this. Okay, and boom, and then usually a boom here. All right, but this is the basic structure of our cholesterol ester. What this actual cholesterol ester hydroxylase is going to do is, is it's going to come over here and it's going to break this bond and release off that actual fatty acid structure. So it'll actually come over, break off the bond by adding water into it, and give off a fatty acid structure. Okay? So, what have we seen so far? We've seen lingual lipase, gastric lipase. We've seen the bile via the phospholipids, with the, uh, which act first to help to make the actual fat globule soluble and make it into fat droplets. Then the bile salts, they come over, bind on to these small fat droplets, make them even smaller, which we're going to talk about here in one second. And it also helps to allow for colipase to bind which facilitates the pancreatic lipase to come and bind and break down the triglycerides into monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. And also phospholipase A2 breaks down phospholipids into the free fatty acids. And even the cholesterol ester hydroxylase will break down the cholesterol esters into free cholesterol. Now, what is this molecule? Because what the bile salts do is when they actually bind on there, they're going to help to make the, the actual fat droplet even smaller. So when they make it smaller after these actual monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids start getting broken down, this little guy here, this fat droplet, we're going to make it even smaller. So it was first pretty big with the fat globule, then smaller with the fat droplets, then we're going to break it down to monoacylglycerol and to free fatty acids. This sucker is going to be so tiny. What is this structure here called? So look here, I'm going to have a tiny little circle there with now containing my monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids and even some, phosph uh, some actual phospholipids surrounding it still a little bit, right? And now I've broken down my cholesterol esters into cholesterol, I've broken down the phospholipids into fatty acids, I've broken down the triglycerides to fatty acids and monosoglycerol. Woo! And I have my bile salts here surrounding it. And guess what else? Some other guys say, hey, can I hop on for a ride? You know who these guys are? Some other guys come on, which are going to be vitamin, a, vitamin, D, vitamin, E, and vitamin, K. They say, hey, can we hop in here? Because we're fat-soluble vitamins, and we can just hop on and hitch a ride with you. So we've broken down the fats, the cholesterol esters, and the phospholipids, and we've actually allowed for the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K to even get onto these little molecules. What are these little molecules here called? These little molecules here that are super, super tiny are called micelles. Okay, they're called micelles. 
Now, me cells are so cool because what they do is they help to make the actual little fat droplets that we formed kind of go down even further in this intestinal chyme watery like secretions. So far that it actually gets to this cell. What is this cell here called? This is going to be a cell that you can find within pretty much all the intestines. So we're going to say primarily this cell will be in the small intestine. But we're going to refer to this as a entero Sight. Okay? What happens is, as we get close to the cell membrane of this enterocyte, the bile salts say, I'm out. The bile salts will say, all right, I'm out of here. So we'll get rid of the bile salts here. And what's really cool is, we'll learn in, uh, later when we talk about the liver, 94% of these bile salts get recycled and go to the liver. So 94% of them, they'll go via the hepatic portal system and they'll go back to the liver. So this circulation here that we're going to call for right now is called the enterohepatic circulation. So these bile salts will actually get recycled, which is pretty cool. But then after that, we're going to release in. So what happens is the free fatty acids and the monoacylglycerol and all those different substances, they're going to get released right in here. So what kind of substances will release into this cell that can diffuse right into it by passive diffusion. We'll release some cholesterol. We'll release some fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K. We'll also release what else? Some free fatty acids and we'll release some monoacylglycerols. Now, what these guys are going to do is, is we're going to take a lot of these substances, pr particularly the free fatty acids and even some of the cholesterol. And we're going to take it to a specific area, which is going to be what's called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so this red structure here is going to be our smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Once they go to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, there are special types of enzymes that are going to convert the free fatty acids and the monosylglycerol back into triglycerides. So that's pretty interesting. So it's going to actually resynthesize that and convert it right back into, again, this structure here, which is going to be the triglycerides and the cholesterol. Okay, so now look here. We do that. We reconvert it. We're going to put here this brown. That's going to be the triglycerides that we resynthesized. We're also going to put some of these vitamins in there too. So the vitamins will actually get incorporated into this. And the cholesterol that we had, we're going to actually take some of that cholesterol. Some of it we might keep in the actual free cholesterol form. He'll represent that in blue. But some of the cholesterol, we're actually going to reconvert back into cholesterol esters. Okay? So, so far, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum takes these structures up. As it takes these structures up, it's going to synthesize triglycerides, which are going to represent in the brown. It might keep some of the cholesterol in the free cholesterol form. It might turn some of the cholesterol into this baby blue form, which is going to be the cholesterol esters. And some of these fat soluble vitamins are still going to be packaged in there. Now, from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we can take these structures here and we can have it combine with some other things. What is this other thing? Let's say we take it to the next or, uh, organelle. And this organelle is going to be what's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum will take the structures, all these different things that we just decided to resynthesize, okay? And when it does that, it's going to put like a protein coat on it. So it's going to undergo some modifications. And then from this modifications, we're going to bud this thing off here. So now it's actually have like a little budding thing here. And from this, we're going to get a structure here. And this structure is still going to have the fat soluble vitamins. It's still going to have these triglycerides. It's still going to have some cholesterol. And it's still going to have some cholesterol esters. And if we did have any fatty acids, that we, uh, free fatty acids and some other structures here, we can even do one more structure here, not super, super uh, care, careful about it. I mean, uh, sensitive about it, but other things, it could be phospholipids, okay? So what are these, some of these things here? Let's write them down here. The 
pink we're going to represent as phospholipids. The orange we're going to represent as the fat soluble vitamins. So I'll put here A, D, E, K. The brown is going to represent the triglycerides. I'm going to put P, T, A, G for the triacylglycerols. The blue is going to represent the cholesterol, free cholesterol. And the baby blue is going to represent the cholesterol esters. Now, once we have all that, we start throwing in another protein. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum actually puts a protein on the outer part of it. Let's do this one here in black. It puts an outer protein on this one. So here I'm going to have this protein here. And this protein that it's going to put on the outer part of it is going to be what's called APO B48. So it is going to have some actual proteins here. They're going to be dispersed around it, which are going to be the ApoB48, which if you watch our lipoprotein metabolism video, it'll make more sense. Now, after that, this guy, it'll go to the Golgi apparatus and get even a little bit more packaged. And then what happens is it gets excreted out. So it's going to get exocytosed out of this cell. So now, once it gets released out here, so let's say that we actually have this sucker get uh, exocytosed out of the cell this enterocyte, the next thing that happens is he's a pretty decent sized structure. So because he's pretty decent sized, he's not going to be able to really just fit into our circulation, our blood, right? So because of that, we have to take him a different route. What is that different route? Well, there's these highly specialized lymphatic capillaries. And these highly specialized lymphatic capillaries found in the intestines are called lacteals, okay? These lacteals are going to be really important because we'll talk about the lymphatic system later. They have these little structures called mini valves, which is formed by the endothelial cells lining it. And they have these valves that only open up one way. And when the pressure inside of the interstitial fluid is high, it opens up those actual valves, those flap like mini valves, and allows for the fluid here in the actual interstitial fluid to leak in. So now, this structure that we just made in the intestines is going to get released into our lacteals. What is this structure here called? This structure is called a chylomicron. What happens is, is the chylomicron will get pushed into our lymphatic capillaries, the lacteals. It'll go up via different types of uh, you know, lymphatic vessels and then to lymphatic trunks and then to lymphatic ducts. A particular lymphatic duct that it actually does go to is called the thoracic duct, which is on the left side. And it actually dumps in right where the, uh, the left subclavian vein and the left internal jugular vein meet, where they become the brachiocephalic. It empties that lymph into that structure. Then from there, the lymph can then go to particular, I'm sorry, the chylomicrons can then go to particular organs. Some of those organs that it goes to is it can go to your skeletal muscles, so it can go to your skeletal muscles, or it can go to your adipose tissue. The reason why I'm saying this is a special enzyme located in the capillary endothelium of this area, and this special enzyme is called lipoprotein lipase. So let's here, let's represent him in like this maroon color here. There's a special enzyme here, and this special enzyme here is called lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase. And what the lipoprotein lipase does is, any of the triglycerides that we repackaged into the chylomicrons, which is represented here in brown, we cleave it. And then when we cleave that, we release into the muscle cells and the adipose tissue free fatty acids into these guys. And then this free fatty acids, they can actually metabolize that for energy or for ATP purposes. So for this, they can actually make ATP for this guy, or they can take these free fatty acids and in the adipose tissue, resynthesize it into triglycerides. Okay, so via what's called lipogenesis. 
After that, that chylomicron will then take the remaining substances that it has in it and goes to the liver. And then the liver will actually take up that chylomicron via what's called APOE, LDL receptors, or uh, proteoglycan containing heparin sulfate molecules, take it up, and then eventually use that substances to make what's called another molecule called VLDL. All right, and VLDL we actually can push back into the circulation and go and distribute it to other tissues. All right, engineers, so that pretty much covers the actual lipid digestion and absorption. I truly do hope this made sense. I hope you guys did like it. If you guys did, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, please subscribe. Also, if you guys get a chance, go check out our Patreon account. If you guys have the opportunity to donate, we would truly appreciate it. It helps us to be able to make the most highest quality videos for you guys' enjoyment. So please, if you guys can, go check that out. All right, as always, engineers, until next time.